So about four years ago, I did my first internship at NASA. It was at the NASA Kennedy Space Center in Florida. And at the time I was a third year engineering student, fourth year engineering student going into my senior year. And going into the NASA internship, I was a bit anxious. I didn't really know what to expect. Uh, it seemed like an exciting place to work, but also seemed like an intimidating place to work. And there was a lot of stress, needless to say. And when I first got there, I was excited to meet everyone. And I got my assignment up and running. I worked in a lab with amazing people. And little by little, I started learning what was going on. I was caught up to speed. Then I was contributing my own stuff. And towards the end, I was helping out with projects. And I wrote a report and it was published. And when I came back to university after my NASA internship, something very interesting happened. I started to observe that all of a sudden I was behaving a little different after that internship. I was when my friends asked for like help with things like uh, physics or engineering, I was a lot quicker to jump in and try to give a solution. Um, even if the problem seemed more challenging, I would just kind of jump at it and in the back of my head there was this voice that would be like dude you've interned at nasa you can solve this no problem and i started noticing something is that that internship was not so much about what i learned there or necessarily or the skills i obtained or the project i worked on but it was my presence and me realizing that i had made it through four or five months at NASA, being an engineer, being normal around everyone, getting work done, um, that changed without not that without noticing or realizing uh, at the time. That actually changed how I looked at myself. That kind of changed my self-image. And four years later, I would come across this book, and I'm going to talk about this book in a second, Psycho-Cybernetics, and now it all makes sense. And, and what really happened was that because I went through that internship successfully and gained skills and made friendships and whatnot, and, and because it was NASA, it was such a prestigious place to be at. Um, prior to the internship, I used to think, okay, maybe I don't belong to engineering. Maybe I probably should do something else. Coming back, I'm like, holy shit, I'm a NASA engineer. And even though my skills had, had not changed much, my self-image changed a lot. The way I look at myself changed a lot. And that made me a lot more confident in my skills that made me take more chances and um i went on to apply for a phd program and then i went to nasa for another internship that time it was jpl and i did work very independently and got a really nice letter recommendation and the key the key idea from this video is basically what this book is teaching and uh this is dr maxwell maltz he wrote it in 1960 this concept of self-image is that the way we look at ourselves uh, sometimes it does, it's not necessarily like, like, like when we tell ourselves uh, we're not good enough, we're not smart enough, we're not talented enough. Um, most of the time that has nothing to do with our skill level or our ability to acquire skills, uh, but rather some either like deep-rooted self-limiting beliefs, um, some like whether during our childhood uh, people were being dismissive or we were not, we just didn't, like, like you'd hear someone say, oh, I'm not a math person. Uh, in many cases, because you tell yourself, I'm not a math person, you have this image of yourself that you're not a math person. When, whenever you see a math problem, you're going to be a lot less likely to solve it because you already have this image of yourself that I'm a math person. Um, so this idea of self-image is very powerful. And I actually have a very, an exercise for you uh, that I think you should go ahead and do is you can grab a notebook with two pages, like something normal like this, no big deal, and open it on two sides. And on one side, write down how you currently like imagine yourself or look at yourself or wh what you think of yourself, your traits. For example, like let's say I'm not a math person or I suck at engineering or things of that sort, you know. Uh, and then on the other side of the page, write down your ideal self, like what, what it is that you wish you were or what you would like to be. For example, let's say I'm really good at math and or like I'm, I'm really good at engineering. Um, and, and again, r make that list. And after that, I want, I want you to sit down in a quiet place by yourself, just looking at these two pages side by side and ask yourself, in order to make the transition from the first page to the second page, how many of the things you listed actually require gaining skills and how many of them are just a matter of a distorted self-image? 
as in you might already have enough scales to get to where you want to be. Uh, it's just that the, the negative stories you tell yourself are actually what's holding you back. And I'm willing to bet that's going to be the case most of the time. That, that was the case for me, for sure, in engineering. Um, and once you do that, and if you, if you have the time, I highly recommend you read this book, Psych Cybernetics. Maybe even reflect on some experiences where you did something that was a lot harder than you thought you could handle. And you look back on yourself and you're like, wow, I can handle it. Uh, for example, there's this cliff I jumped off of in Atlanta. Um, it was really scary and it was really high and, 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 and I jumped and I did it and I grabbed this from the water that I landed in with me just to kind of remind myself that, okay, wow, even sometimes something can be so scary, um, you can just kind of take a leap of faith and jump and you can handle it. Um, yeah, so do, do the exercise, uh, read the book if you have the time, there's like an audio book available on YouTube and let me know what you think, maybe write in the comments if you had a similar experience to that. Uh, because I think that concept of self-image is very powerful, especially for engineering students, because a lot of the times, because engineering seems very intimidating at first, like uh, many students are have the belief that I'm just not cut out for this. And you see someone else who's doing it much better than you, and you're like, oh, they're just doing it naturally. Uh, sure, they may be more skilled, but you probably have other skills that you can use to your advantage. I'll make more videos about that. Um, but yeah, that was what I want to talk about today. Hope you gain something from it. Peace, love.